Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's Point Counterpoint. I am Dr. Barrett, and I am here with Dr. Tanya Painter. We are going to talk today about dairy. And on Point Counterpoint, we like to bring out differences of opinion about common hot topics in neurology and headache prevention, because there are a lot of different ways to go about many of these topics. I am an MD, conventionally trained, and Dr. Painter is a naturopath. So sometimes these different traditions have the same perspective. Sometimes they have different perspectives. So today we would like to talk a little bit about dairy, which I think can be a, a big challenge for people to figure out whether or not they should go dairy free or not to help their headaches. First of all, if you are allergic to dairy or don't uh, digest lactose well, then definitely avoid it. Any food sensitivity that you know you have or that has been shown on food testing, yes, definitely avoid it. It's going to create inflammation in your body and can uh, cause some of the inflammation associated with migraine, and it definitely makes things worse from the migraine perspective as well as a whole body perspective. Um, I was working with a patient recently who had a dairy sensitivity and refused to go dairy-free. She's young. She hasn't figured it out yet. It's okay. But <laughs> she just kept arguing with me about, yeah, but it's really hard. I'm like, I I know. <laughs> hey, I'm old and I still struggle with going dairy free. So I yeah, hear that. I get it. I get it. She's like, but I can't eat pizza with my friends. It's like, I, I get it. It's hard. So we wanted to really clarify some of the issues around going dairy free. Who might want to really consider it? I'm just going to say up front, if you have a known dairy sensitivity, <laughs> yes, go dairy free. I'm sure you would agree, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, got it. Okay. Um, and the second issue, the reason that I am probably a little bit more flexible about the no dairy thought within the migraine community than other people is because yogurt is one of the most common food sources of probiotics. Gut health is intimately correlated with brain health. And what we know is that we need those probiotics in things like yogurt or kefir. And for many people, that's the only source of probiotics that they get. You know, they're not eating some of the other types of fermented foods. And so I feel like it's an easy to access source of probiotics, which we need. We can certainly get low sugar varieties of of all of these products. And since that's easy and cheap, that for many people, if they don't have a dairy intolerance, it's really worthwhile keeping dairy on board so that there is that easily available probiotic form. So what do you think? Well, I don't disagree with you. Anytime we can do food as a source of nutrients, like I'm all about that. The problem that I often see is, and we'll take yogurt as a specific dairy example, since that's what you mentioned, is that dairy is high in histamine. So histamine can be a major problem for a lot of people, as you well know, and I'm sure that most of the people listening are probably aware of that as well. So we like to kind of switch away from dairy and, and look at some non-dairy options when we're first getting started on trying to figure out what's causing migraines for certain people. So when, we are, when we're doing that, we're kind of paying attention to the other higher histamine foods as well. So if we're seeing a pattern of multiple foods that are contributing to that high histamine piece, we definitely want to make sure that we're from the yogurt and, and the dairy that has higher histamine. And another way that you can kind of tell is this something that you should be a little bit more worried about is if you take Benadryl or Zyrtec or any of those antihistamines as a uh, part of your cocktail to help with a migraine and or you know that those medications really help to cut down on the pain, histamine is going to be an issue for you. If you have a diagnosis of MCAT, mast cell activation syndrome, things like that, lots and lots of seasonal allergies, allergies year round, environmental things, we know that histamine is a problem. So that's going to be a food that you're going to want to stay away from because of the histamine component to it. I think that makes a lot of sense. We've got definitely pros and cons on various parts of dairy here. If you tolerate histamine, then yogurt and kefir can be a good source of probiotics for you. If you know that you don't tolerate histamines, then maybe avoid those foods, but it's for the histamine issue as well as the, the dairy issue. Uh, with dairy and um, in yogurt in particular, there are, there are some inflammatory properties to it based on how the cow is raised, whether it's organic and grass fed. So much as you know, somebody might have heard about the importance of grass fed beef over conventional grown beef because of the inflammatory properties of conventionally grown meat versus the grass fed free range meat. I mean, there's a huge difference 
uh, and clinically studied the, the amount of omega-3 fatty acids found in grass-fed free-range beef is far superior to conventionally grown, right? Where they're just stuck in pens. We know that that plays a role in the inflammatory properties of our dairy as well. So when you're looking at, you know, wanting to stay with dairy, if you can find options like cheeses, yogurts, things that are from a grass-fed free-range cow is going to have a lot less inflammatory properties than one that's, you know, milked from a conventional standpoint where they don't really get out and roam around, right? Dr. Barrett and I were talking just before we pressed record. There are, there are lots of foods that have good probiotics for us to build up our gut bacteria and fertility. The problem though, is that all of those foods are fermented and fermented foods are high in histamine. So if you have a histamine issue, there tends to be a problem with the gut as a reason why you have a histamine issue, but you can't have the food probiotics to help heal that gut problem that's leading to the histamine because of the high histamine food. That's It's just like this horrible circle, right? It's important to kind of understand that in that situation, we would want to do some sort of an oral supplemental probiotic, but you have to be really careful because even some of the most common supplemental probiotics are containing bacteria that are pro histamine. They help to increase histamine and produce histamine in the gut. So your safest bet when you do have a histamine problem is to go with a soil-based probiotic. There's a handful of them out there now. A lot of research that show that these actually do a better job of repopulating our gut anyway. They're very nutritive to our gut lining. They help us to, to produce and break down um, vitamins and nutrients that we need from our food. Lots of nuances to even just something as simple as dairy, yes or no, right? There's never an easy answer when it comes to migraines. Should we do this or that? Well, it, de it depends. It's always the answer, right? It depends. Yeah. And I think the important thing is that it needs to be individualized to the person who's trying to make oh, this yes. decision. You have to look at multiple factors <laughs> in order to make a really good recommendation about what's right for them. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I think, part of the reason that it's better to work with somebody than to just try to figure out these answers on Google, because Google doesn't know you and your situation and can't give the same kind of thoughtful answer that is going to really help you move the needle on your own migraines. Just as we were talking, right? We each have a bit of a different idea about whether dairy should be or should not be included in a diet, diet for migraine. But I think we both can agree that it depends on the person, right? Okay. Diet, dairy can be excellent to continue to eat. It's a good source of a lot of nutrients and protein. And it's a quick snack idea in a population of people who already tend to restrict way too much because everything triggers a migraine, right? So I think, yeah. Yeah. And that is exactly part of the reason that I don't typically recommend that people go dairy-free just for the migraines. If they have an allergy, yes, for sure. If they don't, I don't typically recommend it because I just don't see it being a huge lever to push. I mean, we only have so much bandwidth trying to deal with chronic health problems. And I really think it's important to steer people towards the thing that are going to give the biggest outcome. Like if we could all spend all our time on our health, that would be great. Yeah, right. <laughs> <But> we can't, <laughs> you know, we've got to cook dinner for the kids and get them to dance practice and then maybe say hi to our partners, you know, yeah, so, right. so many things to do. And so I, I really think it's important for people to spend their time on the things where if they push that lever, they're going to get the biggest result. And I just have not seen dairy be much of a a big needle mover for people in getting them to headache free. So that's another reason that I, I typically don't. And, and like you were saying, so many people are restricting so many foods anyway, because it's the only way that they have encountered to control their headaches. It's one of the only thing that's out there in the popular press is eat this, don't eat that. So people are like, okay, I'm going to get rid of these headaches. I'm going to stop eating all of it. And I can't tell you how many people I end up seeing with eating disorders are malnourished when we check their nutrient level, because they're just working so hard to yeah. get the headaches gone. And they're, you know, they're, I think they're putting a lot of time and energy into things that aren't really going to move the needle for them. But one thing that I would also say that is a big thing, if you have any skin issues like psoriasis, eczema, you know, hives, things like that, that usually what we see from a, a naturopathic standpoint, anything relating to the skin Dairy tends to be dairy and gluten tend to be the top two foods that will contribute to a skin condition. So anytime, you know, if somebody comes in and they've got skin issues, but you know, their main complaint is migraine, but then they've also got skin issues. 
the first thing we're going to do, okay, let's switch away from gluten grains and add in other non-gluten grains, right? That's the important thing. We don't want to eliminate anything. We want to switch away from the inflammatory or potential problems and switch to something more anti-inflammatory, right? So when we're taking dairy out, we want to make sure that we're adding other sources of protein and calcium in, right? So that switching is really important. So I would love to just untrain elimination completely. Like let's take elimination out of the food conversation and let's more talk about switching, switching something away from something to something else. Right. We take something away, we add something in. Yeah. Yeah. Just psychologically, that's so much better. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and then we come from an abundant mind, mindset as opposed to a scarcity mindset and it becomes so much easier to figure out how to eat. When you're trying to evaluate, should I or shouldn't I try this dairy switch uh, idea? If you have skin issues, then absolutely. If you haven't tried the dairy-free option yet, I would encourage you to at least give it a month and then try adding it back in. And if anything flares, if your migraine comes roaring back, if your skin was getting better and now all of a sudden it's flared up again, if you had constipation and it was better and now you're having constipation again, whatever it is, if something flares after you reintroduce it, that's a pretty good indicator that that is gonna be an inflammatory food for you that you're sensitive to, you just didn't know it. And along those lines of your switching, I mean, there are all sorts of other alternate milk yogurts and kefir products. I just bought a bottle of cashew milk kefir. Mm -hmm. Haven't tried it yet. I'll let you guys know later, but um, (laughs) plenty of other, plenty of other ways you can get those easy fermented things, but they're pricey. Um, A little bit of a discussion about pros and cons of dairy. Hope you can find something in this discussion that applies for you. If you hear anything that resonates, please drop a comment below the post. We would love to hear what people are thinking about this and we will reply to keep the conversation going. All right. Dr. P, thank you for joining us today. This is Dr. B signing off from Point Counterpoint. We will see you next week.